Oh, I'm leaning on this arm. I got a flu shot. Anyway, take a seat. Tell me what appears to be the problem. Oh, stiff arm. Hello, my friends. Let's uh, talk about some fountain pen issues. I have four questions, two a bit more philosophical, two very practical. Let's start off with number one. Would it be a good idea to take lecture notes with a non-permanent fountain pen ink? Um, that's what I did throughout my undergraduate studies and my master's and my PhD. Next question. No, I mean, so I, 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 I don't think it, it necessarily matters, but part of the question was also these are supposed to be long-lasting notes. I mean, you certainly can. Bear in mind that especially washable inks, washable blues, can really, really lose their luster, can become very pale to a point of being illegible. Some more than others, the more washable, the more likely that happens. Plus, if you knock over a cup of tea, you understand the problem. I think this brings us to the issue though of how permanent is anything now i don't want to get into a massively philosophical discussion but nothing really lasts forever if you're taking notes that you want to be able to read a decade from now then a permanent fountain pen ink is probably a good idea maybe you want to dedicate one fountain pen to an iron gall ink uh, esri ecclesiastical supplies something else with an s registrar's ink i think you can get it in the in the uk i'm pretty sure it's e s s r i that's Last time I checked, the ink that still has to be used on official documents in the United Kingdom, I don't know if that's still the case, but it, it used to be a couple of years ago, is an iron gall ink. Iron gall ink can be terrible for fountain pens. Some feeds melt. I've seen the horror stories online. I've seen the pictures. I've used a lot of iron gall inks and I've never had issues, but I've cleaned my pens meticulously after use. Iron gall ink, though, will be pretty much as permanent as it gets. There are medieval manuscripts written in iron gall ink, you can read them today, no problem whatsoever. But again, that requires a certain level of pen hygiene, that kind of stuff. If that's not an option, if you really want to use a non-permanent ink, then guess what? Your writing is not going to be permanent. And that may be okay. Or it may not be. Asking the question in this case, I think, is kind of answering it, right? Like It is non-permanent ink. So... Is it a problem? That really depends on how you want to use those notes. If you want to use them for a year, you're fine. I think if you want to use them for five years, you're fine. But are you going to pass them on to your great-grandchildren? Maybe not. But remember, it also depends on the paper and maybe on the climate where you live. And there's all kinds of other factors that come into place, come into play. Sorry. Another thing you could do, if, but this only really works if you use loose leaves, is just Put it in a scanner. A lot of copiers these days also scan, digitize it. That is no problem, as long as you make a backup. And if you have a notebook, you can take pictures with your phone. I know it's not the same, but if the concern is my notes have to remain legible forever, well, that's a good way to do it. Put, put pictures in a cloud. It's probably going to be fine forever. Do what you will. I hope that helps. Okay, here's an interesting question. No, sorry, I didn't mean to suggest the previous one was not interesting, but I, I thought this was an interesting question. Can you get titanium nibs? Are they any good? Of course you can. There are steel nibs, there are gold nibs, uh, there are palladium nibs, and there are titanium nibs. I have one here. This is a pen 3D printed by my friend William Shakur, uh, and this is a titanium nib. And I have my... Oh, sorry. Arm, yeah, the arm is stiff. Um, I have my device... Clip it on, give me one sec. Here's a titanium nib. As you can see, it has a specific type of texture. It feels quite smooth, but it's not a mirror polish like you would see on many other nibs. Um, 
You can get them in number six and number eight. This one happens to be number eight, it's quite big. And Bock, Peter Bock, Peter Bock, I suppose, in Heidelberg in Germany makes them. I don't know about number five. I don't remember if I've ever seen a number five titanium nib. But number six for sure, number eight for sure. And they're made of titanium. And titanium has the interesting property, this, I think this is gonna hurt, but that, yeah, that's really nice. Oh, that's amazing. <clears throat> uh, it's, it's a little springier. Now, the disadvantage of titanium, and I, I don't know, I, I always have the feeling it varies a bit from nib to nib, is that you don't really get a warning, so you can push it quite far, but then all of a sudden the tines are sprung and they don't snap back. So I'd be a bit careful. I wouldn't push them too hard, but you can typically get a nice bit of line variation out of those kinds of nibs. Um, so bear in mind that. The second thing, if anyone knows this, I would love to know, but I get the feeling when I look at these nibs that the tipping material is also titanium. Maybe I'm completely off. Usually with gold or steel, the tipping material is a very hard metal. I have the feeling with titanium nibs, it's titanium. And what I will say is any titanium nib, no, every titanium nib I've ever used has a particular type of feedback. It's not scratchy and it's hard to explain, but once you ever use one, you'll see what I mean. It's not glossy smooth. There is a type of feedback to it. I think that's quite a pleasant feedback, but not everyone likes it. I wonder if that's because the tipping is titanium as well. Um, but anyway, because I've noticed that in all those pens, and I've used quite a couple. So that I would say, and the final thing I would say is, most of them are this color. I had one that was kind of an, almost like a dull gold color. I'm assuming they anodized that. That was on a Stipula Etruria uh, Magnifica that I sold recently. See the last consult the doctor about selling pens. But um, yeah, that was also a very nice pen. Also titanium. Yeah, titanium nib. Okay, the next question. Um, this I also thought was interesting. When you are looking to purchase a pen, how do you weigh different criteria? For example, utility, aesthetics, price, etc. That's a very good question. Now, obviously, I'm assuming you're asking for my opinion because I can't give anyone else's opinion uh, and people will vary. Uh, I know people who refuse to use a nib if it's not gold. doesn't matter how expensive the pen is, it has to be gold, otherwise they won't touch it. I know people who only use uh, piston fillers. I know people who only use vintage pens. doesn't matter, typically that's 14K, but anyway, you know, it, it, it has to be vintage, otherwise they won't touch it. So obviously, different people will value different factors differently. And I feel that's a really obvious thing to say, but I want to point it out anyway. So for me, there are a couple of things that come into play. I've used fountain pens for a very long time. I'm not going to tell you the whole story, but we start with fountain pens in primary school um, when we were about six or seven in the Netherlands. And... So I, I, I mean, I, that's, a, that's a longer and longer time uh, ago because that's how time works. But really seriously, I would say I've used fountain pens for a good decade. And I've used a lot of pens. Because I've used a lot of pens, I now have a pretty firm grasp on what I look for. And it's a couple of factors. The first thing is how it writes. It has to write properly. Now, having said that, pens can be made to write properly. I've had a few pens that did not write well out of the box, but that I kept anyway, and that a nib master, sorry, a nib meister tuned. Can make a night and day difference because they know what they're doing and they can turn an okay pen into a great pen. So I've definitely done that. I've had, I've, I've experienced that. But it has to write properly. And again, that doesn't have to be out of the box. The second thing that I value a lot is, what does it look like? 
And I have... Oh, really, it's the arm. It's not my age, it's the arm. Um, I have a number of pens. This is not everything I own, but it's pretty close to everything I own. Okay? There's different kinds. Some designs, like this Conid, it's a very industrial look, and I like that. This is a Visconti that is almost gaudy, just because of the material. It's it's very intense material. Same thing with this Visconti Speakeasy. This is an opera elements. These red ones are classic pens, now Lambrou pens. Beautiful pens. So the looks to me matter. It is very rare that I have a pen that I find absolutely hideous, but I keep just because it writes nicely. It has happened in the past, but it's not very common. So the writing matters, the looks matter. I don't really care about filling systems. Initially I did. I started with cartridge converter pens, then I got piston fillers, and I thought, well, if I'm going to buy an expensive pen, it has to be a piston filler. I don't agree with that anymore. Cartridge converters are just very easy to use. They're easy to clean, um, and I find that very convenient. So, filling system doesn't really matter to me. Sometimes it is a factor. When you buy a Conid bulk filler, the bulk filler filling system is one of the big selling points. Because the king size, the Conid king size I've shown you, is pretty much a Mont Blanc 149. It's, if you have the, the um, round top one, it's the same size, it's the same shape. Uh, so, so I'm just saying, like that, there the filling system really is one of the big sellers. And yes, the price matters, but this also kind of leads me into the next question. The price matters, but I don't buy a lot of pens. Now I'll get back to that. Um, I can sum up everything what I've said as follows, and that will be my segue into the final question. A pen has to blow me away. And that does not mean it has to be a thousand plus dollar pen. Sometimes I have an inexpensive pen that I just love. But it has to do something for me. And now, after all these years, and God knows how many videos on fountain pens, I have held a lot of pens. I haven't owned all those pens. But I've held a lot. Pens get sent to me for reviews. I realize how very fortunate I am to be in that situation. But I have handled hundreds and hundreds of pens. Not just for the reviews, but also at pen shows, and also in pen club meetings, and all those kinds of things. So, that I think brings me to the final question. I'm just putting on this, the timestamp. And that is, how often do you acquire pens? Less often than in the past? Absolutely. In 2021, and this is recorded in October 2021, I have bought zero pens. Because I have what I like. The year before that, I think I bought two or three. But I'm, I'm at a stage now where I really have what I like. And if you couple that with what I just said of a pen has to blow me away, the blowing away part doesn't happen so often anymore. A Lamy Safari does not blow me away. That's not because there's anything wrong with a Lamy Safari, but it does not blow me away. That's all. This is not a value judgment, but I'm giving you my personal opinion. Most pens do not blow me away. And some pens do blow me away, but they're incredibly expensive. So I'd end up not purchasing them. Some pens are very expensive and they blow me away and I end up purchasing them. But again, it's very rare. When you start off in a hobby, you have, I think, shiny kit syndrome. And everything you see it looks nice, you want to have. Very natural, I've been there. But now, I really look at a pen and I think, is this something I need? Is it something that blows me away? Is this spectacular? Is this a matter of, I need to have this? 
And I would say that nine and a half out of 10 times, the answer is no, I do not need this. I don't really want this. There's something about it I don't like. And I'm fine with that. I'll give you one concrete example. There was the, I have it here, I'll show you. There's the Armando Simoni Club Bologna Extra. Came out, DC Pen Show 2017. I was there. Beautiful pen, in my mind. Large pen, Arco Celluloid, has a, uh, a compressor filler, number eight gold nib, uh, large ebonite feed. This ticks a lot of boxes for me. Nice material, bigger pen, interesting filling system, large nib, actually they're magic flex nib, so it has a bit of nip, nib, has a bit of um, springiness to it. And then it came out in the wild celluloid, and at some point it came out in the green arco celluloid, which is even rarer than the brown arco celluloid. And I was looking at it, I thought, wow, that's really attractive, that's really beautiful. But then I also thought to myself, but I have this. If I have this, why would I also have that? No judgment here. I know people who have a whole collection of Bologna extras. Awesome. But that's not for me. I'm more conservative in what I obtain. And I have owned a lot of pens and sold a lot of pens. So unless it blows me away, it's just not happening. Anyway. That was a somewhat long answer. The short answer was, no, I don't buy that many pens anymore. But I'm assuming that you would like to hear a bit more reasoning than just me saying that. I hope this was useful. Please leave any other questions that you have below. Uh, let me know how the audio quality is doing. I think I figured out the issue with the mic, as I said last time. And that's it. I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye.